Good morning, Lagos. Thank you very much for tuning in to Smooth 98.1. This here is uh, Locker Room 981. It's uh, the show that brings you sports stories in the morning like this. And of course, we have Tega. Tega Supreme. Good morning, Tega. Good morning. Huh? <laughs> Good morning. Okay. That's <laughs> Lagos. Get some sleep. I know. <laughs> Lagos, join the conversation as Tega is awake. You're very bright and early and ready to give you the stories and analysis to this story. Send us messages through WhatsApp to 0809-444-0981. Also reach out to us on uh, Twitter. We are at Smooth91FM and please use the hashtag LockerRoom91. Don't forget there are two hours in locker room, so we'll be expecting your messages there. And for WhatsApp messages, that number again, 0809-444-0981. Our first story is about Super Falcons, and uh, they've lost 0-3 to the Steel Roses of China on Thursday in a four-nation invitational football tournament at the Huitang Stadium in Mezu, Weihua, China. The goalkeeper, Tochuku Oluehi, who made heroic saves on route of the Falcons' ninth triumph at the 2018 African Cup Women's Cup of Nations in Ghana, put up a good display to keep the scoreline down. Nigeria will face Romania next, who lost 0-3 to Korea for third place spots, while China will battle South Korea in the, in the finals. Now, both matches come up this Sunday. Yes, um, so this is one of the invitationals that the NFF planned for the Super Falcons in preparation for their 2019 World Cup. Um, of course, the coach has taken the girls that he thinks, you know, he can use at the World Cup and some people that he, he's not sure. Let's, let's just, I'm not sure about what your particular skills are. Mm. So let's see how you fit in the team and they, they didn't go to 3-0 is a very respectable scoreline compared to what it could have been, mm -hmm. have been a if not for a, a good goalkeeping display and yes i say a good goalkeeping display in spite of three goals um and a few missed chances by the chinese but it, it, it is good preparation for nigeria if you're going to go and, if you're going to face the rest of the world um in france you're going to have to meet teams that fly like china mm -hmm. those girls have france. pace Cheese. <laughs> the, the Chinese, the Asians are known for. Look, look, this is look, it's different. Look, the Chinese men don't fly like this. Mm, they are, they'll catch you. These girls, <laughs> they look like AI. I mean, compare them to the Super Falcons. It's like AI. It's, it's AI to analog tech. <laughs> it's just not good. <laughs> but they need, they need this exposure. That prepares them for what they are going to face on the world. So they have this tournament, um, uh, this four nation tournament, and then I think they have another um, tournament that they're going to again, and, and maybe that just gives them a better chance at the World Cup when they do face it. So it's a loss, but it's also a victory on the one hand that there is at least preparation for the Super Falcons this time before a major tournament. All right, thank you very much for that. Let's get into our next story. This one here says, Ghana journalist who helped expose corruption in football shot dead. And uh, well, the story goes, an investigative journalist in Ghana who helped expose a high-ranking official at World Football uh, FIFA as at World Football FIFA, body FIFA as corrupt uh, was shot dead by gunmen on a motorbike as he drove home alone at night, uh, police have said. Uh, his name is Hamed Hussain, Hussein Sule. He was killed late on Wednesday, uh, shot twice in the chest and once in the neck at close range while driving in a suburb of Accra where he lived and uh, the police said he died immediately. Yes, um, this is one of those, remember the Anas um, revelations, the Anas videos? Um, this is one of the journalists that was part of those investigations. Um, Anas himself ahead um, covers his face, but some of the people that helped him <coughs> to get the stories um, and to plan all those things that are, they expose their faces. And so it so happened that one of them, um, in fact, there was a live TV show where an administrator was invited to the show and he was telling people that if they saw this guy, um, Sule, that was shot, yeah. that they should slap him. He told everybody where he lives. He lives in Medina here. If you see him, slap him, wow. beat him. 
he's a bad person how can he do this how can he do that and for me i think first of all immediately first things if i were the journalist on that show you will not be speaking for too long you mm. cannot come on the show to tell people to i mean to be that's inciting to, balance. to assault yes. another journalist mm -hmm. for whatever reason and to make it to make matters worse he assaulting him because he exposed some kind of corruption you don't do that first of all so the journalists on the show themselves were unethical to do that um and then if i were the police are looking to that because that instigating violence yes. so immediately after that show as he's coming out of this studio You're just to be coming into a police van but mm -hmm. all that all of that didn't happen and and then you you say this and some weeks later the guy is shot in the same Medina that you told everybody he lives in and he's gone i'm not saying that you did it i'm not saying that it was maybe your news but there's too many things that were left undone for this guy to have gotten killed you can't be killing journalists because they're doing their job that's their job so it's sad i mean the president has, has put a voice to this so the police will be working extra hard you know you know it's still africa at the end of the day once the president says do this then you see everybody bringing out the james bond in them and so i'm, I'm guessing that with the presidency already promising results that the police are going to get behind it and find out who the perpetrators of this act were um maybe they, they catch the killers and, and then then get some justice but this is sad news yeah it's quite sad uh, we have messages here. Chimovi Victor from Alaba International here sent in this one. He says, the Super Falcons losing successfully against China was expected. It should have been more if not for the goalkeeper. Let's see what they get off against Romania this weekend. Uh, Chimovi, why do you successfully lose? I, I, I don't care. Lose <laughs> successfully. Uh, Bash from Yaba said, this is warning for Anas and Anas that Ghana is not safe for him anymore, even if he is wearing a disguise. Uh, let's go on. Let's talk about Roger Federer. Uh, Roger Federer delivered a serving masterclass to sweep aside American Taylor Frizz and reach of the Australian Open fourth round. The defending champion won 6-2, 7-5, 6-2 under the roof on Rod Lava Arena at the rainy Melbourne Park. In his uh, comments, Federer was interviewed and he said, I wanted to get out of the blocks quickly as I knew of the threats and its possibilities on the serve. Who was playing uh, Federer made this comment as he was playing this hundreds match at the Australian Open. He continues, he said the second set was tough. There were a few chances, but he protected his serve well and it was close. We had some good points and it was fun. I wish him all the best for the future. Yes, um, but then again, I'm going to have to say this about Roger Federer. I've noticed in um, a lot of his matches, second set, he always drops his intensity for some reason I, I don't think he, he, he deliberately does it i think mm -hmm. in fact he's taking note of it because you see him trying extra hard and that's when he starts hitting long on the forehand or hitting a bit too wide on the backhand but it is basically something that happens every second set even his his first set percentage just drops in the second set i don't know what it is but it needs to be sorted out and i think that's part of the reason why the second set was a bit tough um otherwise taylor Fritz was quite routine if you ask me for roger federer so he he's now through um to the first second to the fourth round wow. <laughs> yeah right. I, have to, I have to count he's now through to the fourth round um but in the women's tennis also big uh, um showdown today um Bosniaki took on sharapova <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> for those who that know, uh, we, I know you know where I wanted to He's swing to, to but was Nyaki being a very Tottenham in her display? Oh boy. Uh, eventually lost out to Sharapova. Again, Sharapova, I, I think the thing, I, the thing I would say that I respect about Sharapova is she goes for broke. Mm. Um, so she's facing a big name, and she, and she she knows she has only two options: win or go home. Right. And so she even some she takes some risk shots. And amazingly, the work with, with, with Wozniacki, especially in this game, she was a bit too measured. It looked like she was calculating every single step. And I understand that you have to respect the opponent mm. on the opposite end, but you just have to remember, I'm the higher ranked player. There's yes. a reason why I'm, why I'm world number three and she's world number 20. Put your back into it, but she didn't gamble much. Even sometimes when she, you, you expected her to step in, mm. you know, and hit a winner she'd rather stay on the baseline just for, for security and i think that's what just gave sharapova the slight edge and the third set um sharapova got one break took that break and it was game over so congratulations to sharapova she moves on to, moves on to the next round um for wozniaki 
is to start all over again. Oh boy. <laughs> Just like uh, Sharp Hopper, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll take a break. <laughs> because <laughs> you're listening to The Locker Room and it's right here on Smooth Night Hi, my name is Eagle. Soul Cowboy. And you're tuned into the smoothest dial on Lagos Radio for the best of everything music. Smooth 98.1. I'm typing this in, I'm the one laughing. I'm typing trends that I get for your name, right? And then I'm typing, share this with all your contacts for three days for answered prayers. If you don't share, three days of bad luck. <laughs> I swear, that one. I'm I, I, right I don't like what I do. Oh my god. That is crazy. You see that a lot of what's up. And I think we've about WhatsApp. Mm. 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 Ah, it's WhatsApp. Mm. 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 Mother is recording. Recording that. So I wrote a few. You guys will be you. Thank you. Thank you. How dare you give me that look? I will cut any questions. Just check. Did my question? I press stop. Yes. Yes. Twenty-three minutes. Okay. Cool. I'll cut out the section. You just let me know where you started and where you ended. The word you started. They said I should send them everything, and then cool. they will edit it. I'll cut it and send it to you, but maybe Perfect. after the show. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So if I need to do some edits, what do I do? Or uh, do it again, let me know. basically. Let me know. Okay. Uh, what time are you doing? Then 11, are you? No, 10. 10. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Wait. Today's live, sir. Mics are up. Lagos, this is Smooth Breakfast, and we're talking sports inside of the locker room here with Tega Supreme giving analysis. Tega Tiger. Tega the fighter. <laughs> we have a message in from Chiwe Nancy on WhatsApp. Chiwe says, I'm so disappointed at the Wozniaki, the defending champion losing so early. She can't even defend her own Grand Slam. She's so inconsistent for my liking. If it's to pose naked at the beach now, she'll carry first. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. If she has a hot body to pose, which one is your Chiwe? <laughs> which one is your Chiwe? Somebody's upset. <laughs> Let's move on to our next story. This one here talks about Arsenal. Unai Emery not thinking about Mesut Ozil leaving Arsenal. Now, Unai Emery says uh, he has not given thought to the possibility of Mesut Ozil leaving Arsenal and revealed that the midfielder could make a return uh, to the side against Chelsea. And uh, a quote here says, he has injuries where sometimes he's okay, sometimes he's not okay. Uh, I want every player to be okay for every match. Uh, he is the same. He didn't play the last game, but this Saturday he could possibly be with us. And now he's in training and he's training consistently. Yes, that's interesting. So you didn't think... Ozil was good enough to play against West Ham, but he's good enough to play against Chelsea. When I listen to artists, I'm loving them. But it's, it's interesting to see how that will turn out. At this particular point, I mean, look, there was a time when when I had that went on that 22 match on beaten run, and he could pretty much do anything and people say, "Yes, you were right. Oh, you were so amazing." Mm -hmm. But when your results don't match your your talk, let me let me your, let me call it what is your arrogance. And you allowed some arrogance, um, and then that's where the question is. So he's a little more humble now, mm. um, in the way he talks about Ozil. Before it would be like, I chose the players that were suited for the game. Now is he would say, I don't want him to leave because you know you two, yeah, yeah, under, yeah, I mean, you're on the hot seat, and you know the questions are coming. There's no real change. Wenger's gone. Problems mm. are still the same, and in some aspects even even worse. 
um so you too you know that your your position is not secure so, you so exactly so there's a way you discuss another person whose position too wasn't secure mm -hmm. it's not going to be as yeah. before i now say this one they'll use it against <laughs> me tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow to sack me um so he, he he does um i mean have to temper temper his statements but what is obvious is that unai emery does not want to work with ozil and there's it's a, sometimes coaches and players don't fit in the same system it's, it doesn't make one player worse than the other it just is two different coaches two different philosophies and that's just how how life is sometimes so as a player if you want to stay relevant on their coach you adapt to what the coach is trying to do okay. otherwise you move on to where it's comfortable for you and that's just a um, lot of business but it, it's going to be an interesting one this weekend Arsenal Chelsea with the battle for top four um, still mathematically mm. up for grabs um, for Arsenal especially and so they're going to want to put in their foot in it the good news for, for Arsenal is that Chelsea also <coughs> have their struggles mm. yes they have good games but other times they've brought in um, questionable results they're yeah. still struggling to find that number nine that would score no no out and out striker and so that's a problem for them um in as much as Eden Hazard can still get them a few goals and William looks like he would come in I mean he got a goal last week that that in and of itself gives most players the confidence to think that they can get more goals mm -hmm. and so they're going to come out with their best foot forward and that confidence because they're the just is still struggling the good news for us is we are both struggling so it's easy it's, it's going to be a contest of the strugglers who comes out top yeah. tops um so ultimately at the end of the day i still think if you ask me that chelsea has a slight edge because chelsea are not as defensively loose as arsenal are. Mm. that's the only reason why i think that chelsea have a slight edge not about the scoring it's about the fact that they concede less goals okay. um and and sometimes these kind of games could come down to that how easily do you concede goals? And that's why I think Chelsea has an edge. All right, so Wiseman11 sent in a message on Twitter and he's reacting to the Ghana uh, to a journalist story. He said, God bless you, Tega. The presenter as well as the producer of the show were unethical. The man even asked that the picture of the journalist be put up and zoomed into. And exactly. He was, he was obliged. Exactly. So sad. TV journalists fail to protect their own, he says. Let's move on to this next story. Now let's go to Barcelona. So they overturned the first leg deficits to beat Levant and reach the Copa del Rey quarterfinals, but could yet be thrown out of the competition after being accused of fielding an Ill ineligible player. Barca won 3-0 at the Camp Nou on Thursday with Lionel Messi setting up two Osmani Dembele's goals and then scoring himself to seal the 4-2 victory on aggregate. Levante all claim Barcelona defender Juan Brandaris Trumi played illegally in the first leg as he should have been serving a suspension in his words, as the Catalan said this earlier on Thursday, says, whatever happens on the field of play today, Levant are going to take the situation to the Federation tomorrow. We feel that there's a solid enough precedent to back up the club's decision to do this. Okay, here, here, this is, this is interesting. And, and sometimes I, I wonder how clubs miss these things. Um, but they are, but they are conflicting. Let me put it to you. There seem to be conflicting um, summations on what really happened. So a player is supposed to be suspended. He plays in Secunda B, um, and he was supposed to be suspended. This is the Copa del Rey, and I'm, if I think that suspension should carry over to this tournament. Mm -hmm. um, but what the rules have said and what the distinction is is two different things. Um, what 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 the Barcelona is claiming is that his suspension only affects the Secunda B and the La Liga. Yeah. It doesn't affect the Copa del Rey, which is why, which is what I'm questioning because it's all a lo it's all part of the FA tournament, mm -hmm. um, and and so we don't know what the statement is on that. That's the first, uh, the first um, thing that Barcelona is saying in their favor. The second thing is that Levante should have written their their what's it called their protest. 24 hours after mm -hmm. so you have a 24 hour window yeah so and levante did not even write they did, in fact they didn't even know about the ineligible player till after the 24 hours so they did not record their protest immediately after yes, the first yes, leg yes. um and um that could turn out to be a problem but the fa still has at the end of the day the fa still has every right to look at it whether the 24 hours has elapsed or not, or not and yeah. because the fa carried out judgment 
on a certain club called Real Madrid mm. for fielding an illegible player. Look, Real Madrid, everything in, in, is political. If you can sanction a club like Real Madrid, every other club is open to sanction. It's that simple. And I don't know what kind of political tricks Barcelona would want to use, but it may not work in their favor. And regardless of this win, they may still be out of this competition because there is a player that they shouldn't have used. Why clubs don't check mm. the records of these players? Why clubs don't even... It's not just clubs. Why teams don't look at it? Remember when it happened to Nigeria when we fielded mm -hmm. an eligible player? We did not check our... It's because somebody did not check the email yes. to see that he's been sent a message that you have one mm -hmm. um, player on suspension. Um, why clubs manage to do this? I don't understand, but I guess heads will roll at the end of the day. What if you want to take from them, beat them? It's simple. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about Liverpool. Uh, uh, Jorginho van Yelden uh, thinks it would be stupid for Liverpool to believe not to believe they will win the coming week. Uh, Kouche says, "I think it would be stupid if I said no. I don't think we will win." He said, "If you ask people from Manchester City, they will be champions. Uh, they will say yes. It's a bad sign if you say no." But we'll see what happens until the end of the season. We'll give, every, we'll give it everything we have. We'll try to win every game and see what happens at the end of the season. There's still a long way to go. Yes, and this is this is one of the truth parts I like. All this nonsense of, uh, we'll take it one game at a time. Let's temper it. Look, there's no way you can tell me. It's in the back of their minds. Every day when they wake up, they're like, four points clear. <laughs> at the top of the league. They're dancing to themselves. They're thinking it is right there. It's almost in their hands. And... Mm -hmm. So for you to come out and say we are not thinking about the league table, it's a right. life from the pit of hell. <laughs> um, but what it is is that as long as they have it just in the back of their minds and then they temper their games result by result, then they can achieve it. Um, another game, interesting game, I won't say it's a tough one, um, is the Crystal Palace they face this weekend. It can be a tricky game sometimes because Crystal Palace, again, they have some games where they are amazing. Um, and then they have some games where they are completely different people. Mm. Um, and some of those games that are amazing are games where they play against the top four. They tend to bring out some extraordinary tricks that we didn't know that they have. Um, and so this facing Liverpool, they'd want to try and do that. But Liverpool, again, Liverpool has been pragmatic in their approach this season. So it's not all gung ho, let's just go and attack that weak defense. Mm. It's also let's protect whatever lead we have at every point in time. So they manage their matches as they play. Um, uh, and so it will be interesting for me to see them against Liverpool. If you ask me, Liverpool, of course, getting all three points. Um, but football being what it is that anything can happen, that's the only odd mm -hmm. I'll give Crystal Palace this weekend. So we watch and uh, look forward to that game. Now, Paul Bia sends in this message on WhatsApp. That's actually bashed from the other sent in a message from WhatsApp. It says, Tega, why doesn't Roger and Williams uh, play on Old Haber? Hmm. Uh, when will be... I can't make out this. What, yeah, what do you say? It says, uh, it says, come Tega, why is it that Roger and Williams, why they're no green old? <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> so well, will they, when will Young be allowed to grow? Roger and Williams are like dictators, like Paul Bia. Uh, uh, kind of if you want them to go, you beat them. It's that simple. <laughs> and then I came from Navy Town says Unai Emery and Arsenal management are not serious. So I, I, that's how they did not consider Ramsey leaving. Now he has signed a pre-contract with Juventus. Make them be there. I just pray Ozil signs for Man United next season and pray his piano scratch that guitar <laughs> during his holiday leave. I'm just thinking about the Liverpool player that will sleep this weekend. All right, Lagos, let's take a break for the <laughs> That's cold. <laughs> That's really cold. Let's go back after this to talk more sports stories inside the locker room. You're listening to Smooth 98.1. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the player that was with. I just said. Which one? Wait, 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 Why doesn't Roger and William go be old? How about? Ah. What's the next time? Okay, Sevilla. Okay. So that was
When they were beaten, they want them to beat them. No, no, I'm curious because it doesn't look like there's anyone that can beat him at all. He's still grounded, like. A lot of people that can beat him. Yep. Easy, very easily. Who will beat him? Ah. See, he said. Shit. The only thing that will help him, tactics. Hi. Still experienced now. Max, you're up. I'm rousing for the alligator. I don't toss a. Mohammed Ali, whose birthday was yesterday, bringing our studio time to 8.42, that's 18 minutes before 9 o'clock. We're still inside of the locker room where we talk sports this morning, and Tega, Tega Supreme, is giving the analysis. Uh, Lagos, join us by sending us messages through WhatsApp to 0809-444-0981. Our final story here, uh, the tide of opinion is turning against Real Madrid coach Santiago Solari in the wake of haphazard results need performances and a baffling team selection in, in less than three months after he succeeded uh, Julian Lopetegui. The former Real Madrid and Argentina midfielder faces the stiffest test of his tenure on Saturday at third place Sevilla, who trashed the European champions 3-0 in September, spelling the beginning of the end for Lopetegui. Sevilla are locked on 33 points with Real, who are fourth in the La Liga standings and 10 points off leaders Barcelona, who hosts Ligons on Sunday. Yes, um, a, a, another battle for position here this weekend um, for Real Madrid. And Sevilla, also a team with their own demons, lost last weekend, mm. could lose um, a, again this weekend. Will, can be tricky. Again, the thing about Sevilla, like I always call them the Tottenham of, of Spain, is they show up to certain games with a mental block. And they just can't break down certain tactics. If you if you defend well enough, um, chances are you may beat Sevilla or you may get something against them. Um, the good news for them is that Real Madrid doesn't go out and defend or sit deep. They go out and play. And so an open game is a little more favorable for Sevilla because they can attack um, and they can, I mean, they have space to run which is what they like to do mm. so if a Sevilla that has brought in consistent results and a Real Madrid that has largely disappointed meeting head to head is an interesting meetup for anybody and considering again the injuries that Real Madrid have is not looking good so I'm thinking that Sevilla want to capitalize on that especially because of the results that they had last weekend mm. um, so if you ask me I would have said slight edge Sevilla but Sevilla being Tottenham as it's like Real Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take this uh, few messages before we go. We have on Twitter, no, no, okay, that's hashtag locker room 981. We have this one actually from 8th World, World Wonder on Twitter. It says, even when Yeldon Steph is afraid of uh, We Manchester City, he knows the moment we go to the top, uh, this time we won't fall. And Liverpool now won't have it in their hands to stop us as we've played them home and away already. We'll see how this survived this Chelsea, this Crystal Palace. Mm. We'll see, we'll see. And she will be Victor from Alaba International send this one. It says Real Madrid versus Sevilla will end in a draw. Both of them are struggling and a share point wouldn't be a bad result. Shimobi, thank you. And that brings us to the end of the show today for Locker Room 9H1. Catch Tega up on Twitter at Tega Supreme. And then if you want to catch up on the latest of what's going on in the world of sports for the ladies, please follow at Allies International and uh, ask questions and find out, follow up on the updates. Lagos, coming up next in 15 minutes, we talk for a Feel Good Friday. We have a conversation surrounding the really annoying trends. You don't want to miss that. Join Kyrie and myself, Valentine, for next Lagos Talks 981.